Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 video. So in this one, I thought I would do a quick video to go over the improvements that have been made to the PS4 exploit for 11.0. The Pwn loader or the exploit loader has been ported over from the original Python version to a C++ version. So it's been completely rewritten in C++, which is much, much faster. And it's going to allow for obviously a less time between each attempt which is ultimately going to allow you to load the exploit much quicker, especially on lower powered devices like Raspberry Pis. It should also now enable us to run it on devices that were previously just too underpowered to run the script before. So this rewrite is by Xfang Fang. There's a bunch of different versions. If you go to the nightly builds, there's versions for, of course, Windows, Mac OS and Linux, as well as specific Linux versions that target the Raspberry Pi and ARM based CPUs. So you have quite a few versions there. I'm hoping we see maybe like an open WRT version so that we can run this on routers at some point, which would be great. I did actually manage to get the Python version running on a router, but it was just too slow. It took far too long between each attempt, so not really worth it. But this C++ version should definitely make that possible. So let's go ahead and test it on the PC because most of the loaders for the PC version have been updated to use the C++ version. So if we take a look at the Python version first, just to get an idea of the speed. So this is the older version of the loader that is loading the original Python version. And this is a successful attempt that I timed. So from the point where the script actually starts executing, you can see the amount of time that it takes here. So pinning to CPU takes a little bit of time. Scanning for corrupted object takes much longer on the Python version here. And then of course it gets stuck once it finds the correct uh, object. And then once it finds the corrupted object, it then loads the payload and there it is there. So about 40 seconds there to load the Python version. Now, if we switch over to the new version, so this is the latest version of the script that's using the C++ implementation, uh, which will be linked in the description. This is PPPWNGUI version 1.7. So again, doesn't look a hell of a lot faster to begin with, but you can see how much faster it found the corrupted object there. And then of course it's going to load successfully. Uh, this, is a, this is a successful attempt and there it is done. So about 30 seconds. So the difference isn't that big, especially when you're running it on a device that's already pretty powerful. So if you're running this on a pretty powerful computer, the difference is going to be less noticeable compared to running it on a lower spec device like a Raspberry Pi. Now, there are some other benefits to this as well. You no longer need to test the internet connection. So instead, you can just wait for the console to boot up, run the script, and it will not trigger immediately. But if you just give it a few seconds, it will eventually trigger the script after a few seconds. And if you enable the option to retry on a failed attempt, then you can just leave it just like the Raspberry Pi version. You can just leave it and it will keep uh, retrying the exploit until it eventually loads successfully. So, so once again, we're waiting for PADI or PADI. Uh, this lasts for a few seconds and then it's going to trigger the exploit. And there it goes, it's now running. And in this case, it actually loads for the first time. I thought this was a failed attempt, but nope, this was a successful load right there. So you no longer need to go in and test your internet connection. You can just leave it on the home page and then it takes a little bit longer. You can trigger it faster by testing the internet connection, but if you just leave it for a few seconds on the home menu, it will eventually trigger the exploit right there. Okay, so let's move on to the Raspberry Pi here because that is where the biggest difference is going to be. Stooged updated the PyPone script so that it can now use the C++ version. You actually can choose whether or not you want to use the original Python version or the C++ version. So you have the option to pick and generally the C++ version is a lot faster. Right now I'm doing a baseline test using the Python version to give you guys an idea of how long it takes with the Python version. This is on my Raspberry Pi 4B model, the two gigabyte version. And of course it is a lot slower on older Raspberry Pi models like the 0Ws and 2Ws, as well as of course the Raspberry Pi 2s and 3s. They can take multiple minutes with the Python version between each attempt. Whereas in this case, Raspberry Pi 4B is a little bit faster with the Python version. Normally takes me about 70 to 80 seconds. And uh, here we are, we're just about to approach the one minute mark. And of course, we still have not got it loaded yet. We still haven't even got to another attempt. So this is really the problem with the Python version is on these lower spec devices, you're waiting a really long time between each attempt. But luckily, this has now been significantly improved thanks to the C++ version. So the original Python version here, we're coming up on one minute and 20 seconds. 
And then, we, of course, we get the LAN cable not connected, which shows that we are now doing another attempt. So that was the Python version, 1 minute and 20 seconds on a Raspberry Pi 4B. Okay, so now let's take a look at the new and improved C++ version running on the Raspberry Pi 4B. So you get the LAN cable not connected message initially, but you do not get that message reappearing on multiple attempts. It looks like this version of the script does not require uh, the interface to be powered down and powered back up again between each attempt. It can just keep running just like the script does on Windows now. So whenever you get a failed attempt, you tend to just get the message about network not being connected instead of the LAN cable not being connected. So here we are about 30 seconds in and we're actually almost loaded at this point on this Raspberry Pi 4B. Uh, I think it's around the 40 second mark. Yep, there we go. Cannot connect to network. So that shows that it's failed, but it's doing a second attempt. So that is the main difference there between the Raspberry Pi on the Python version and the Raspberry Pi on the C++ version. A significant difference. Pretty much half the time to load the exploit. And that's going to make a huge difference because even if it takes you four or five attempts, that is a significant time reduction between each attempt there. So I'm just going to let this play until it eventually loads the exploit. I think it works within the second or third attempt doesn't take too long so that's a second attempt there okay so now we're on to the third attempt now so again really not that long if you remember if you watched my video on the initial raspberry pi setup it did take me about three minutes to do three attempts three and a half minutes to do three attempts uh, on the original version however this version we're already on the third attempt and it's only been about a minute and a half so on this third attempt now i think it is successful and the speed, it doesn't take any longer to actually load successfully than it does for a failed attempt uh, with this version on the Raspberry Pi. So you can see there that was successful and it only took 30 seconds to actually load. It was actually faster on a success than it was on a failure, which is interesting. Um, but that could just be to do with the timings on when the notification pops up. But uh, yeah, anyway, so there you go, 30 seconds to load the exploit. So major speed improvements made there with this new version. I will go ahead and leave all the download links in the description to the version from XFangFang, the C++ version, uh, the Windows implementation, as well as the Raspberry Pi version. So all of that will be linked below. And now that we have this C++ version, we're already seeing it being ported to less powerful devices that would struggle to run the Python version already. So for example, there's a project called PPLG Pwn, uh, which is actually allowing you to run the script on a rooted LG TV. So if you have a rooted LG TV, you can actually run the script on that, uh, which is actually a really uh, neat implementation there because you have your, uh, your console connected to the TV anyway. So why not have an Ethernet cable connected to it so that you can run the script on your TV? So that is a pretty nice solution. And I'll leave that one linked down below as well. And hopefully we'll see an open WRT version so that we can get it running on routers as well. Uh, which would be very handy because I have a bunch of different routers lying around my house. So it would be nice to be able to use one of those to run the script too. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.